Are you noticing a new vine taking over? It could be porcelain berry, an invasive plant that's rapidly becoming a big problem in our area. While it looks a little bit like our native grapevine, porcelain berry has some key differences. It is really aggressive and can take over. Today we're going to learn a little bit about porcelain berry, what it is, how to identify it, and what you can do about it. The leaves of porcelain berry can be quite variable. Even on the same plant, leaves might look very different. Some might be really lobed, maybe three lobed or five lobed. Some are gonna be heart shaped. And this can be tricky because there can be other plants that look similar. Either way, those leaves are gonna be alternate each other and those margins are gonna have some coarse serrations on them. And the leaves are simple, not compound. Although they might be deeply lobed, those are gonna be simple leaves. The flowers of porcelain berry are small and not very distinctive, a light green to white color, but it's the berries that really steal the show and are really distinctive. These round fruits come in a range of different shades. They start out green and they will develop a different pastel colors from pink to purple to blue with speckles on them. The flowers and then the berries are held in clusters and they have a long stem or panicle. They also are held upwards. Although it's in the same family as our native grapevine, there are some key differences that can help you with ID. The leaves are slightly different on porcelain berry compared to our native grape. The bark does not have the shredded texture that our native grapevine has. And those berries are going to be kind of held upright in clusters compared to our native grape where those clusters hang downward. Porcelain berry is native to Asia. It was introduced repeatedly as an ornamental plant and you can find it in pockets throughout the US. Particularly, it's a problem in the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic as well as some of the upper Midwest. Increasingly though, we're seeing it in Kentucky, especially in Northern Kentucky and Central Kentucky where it's already a big problem. If you look at the predicted future range of porcelain berry, it's likely to spread to a lot of other places in the future throughout the state and beyond. While it might start out in people's yards as an ornamental, it certainly doesn't stay put there. Porcelain berry likes rich, moist soils and it craves the sun. So you're most likely to see it in edges, old fields and on stream sides. Why is porcelain berry considered a problem? Well, first off, it can grow really fast. Some reports put it at growing over 25 feet a year. And those vines can carpet over other vegetation, particularly the native plants that you wanna be seeing. You're not gonna see that if you just have a thick blanket of porcelain berry. Not only is it growing really densely and crowding out those native species, but it spreads really rapidly. It produces lots of seeds. Those seeds can be carried by birds to new areas or they can float downstream if it's growing on a stream side. As with any invasive plant, managing porcelain berry takes patience and persistence. By far the easiest thing to do is to prevent it from becoming a problem to begin with. So don't let it get established. If you can get ahead of it and scout for new infestations and remove them before they spread, that is much easier. Those small vines can be pulled up easily. Um, just make sure you get that whole root system, otherwise they will sprout right back from it. Now, once that infestation is a little bit further along, that can be hard to do. Those root systems can be extensive. And instead, you might be looking at some systemic herbicides. There's a couple different ways to do this. There are a number of herbicides that are effective against porcelain berry, including some of those commonly used in a forestry setting, like those containing glyphosate and triclopyr. In addition, porcelain berry can still be found for sale as an ornamental plant. Don't buy this. Instead, consider a lot of our native vines. While porcelain berry might look that nice and those berries are attractive, it won't stay put in your yard, it will take that over and then it will move into natural areas. Another thing to consider when managing porcelain berry is those seeds. You don't want to inadvertently spread porcelain berry while you're trying to get rid of it. So most management is best done when those plants aren't setting seed. If you can pull them up earlier in the year, that's a great strategy. But if they are setting seed while you're doing it, you want to make sure you're not composting those seeds, but that you're throwing them away and you're not spreading them to new sites. Thanks for joining me today and learning a little bit more about porcelain berry. If you'd like to learn more, make sure to check us out online and follow us on social media. Thanks for doing your part to promote the health of your woods.